next to us showing complete and utter faith that we're not going to do anything. Hey big girl, up the hill she goes. And there's a couple of very young calves in this herd as well. Oh, what a beautiful elephant herd. Hello. Yes, it's all right. It's okay, little one. It's all right, little girl. Look at her tail. The stiff out at the back. And that's quite common with young elephants. They show a little bit more of anxiety. Look at this little calf coming in front here. Hello, my baby. Oh, this is a lovely big herd. Nice, calm, relaxed, moving through. They're accompanied by a few bulls as well. This is very special. That's such a pity our biome guys are, go are gone with their VR equipment. I hear you, big girl. Don't worry. Have you been having... Oh, look at this. Look at the trunk around the baby. Have you been having a nice mud bath, all of you? Is it hot already? There is not a mood in the world that an elephant can't cure. Yes, even you, grumpy girl. The rustling, the crunching. It's very special. Just by the way, speaking of something a little bit smaller than elephants, um, unfortunately our cheetah tracks turned into leopard tracks because oh, mistakes happen and they need to cross into Torchwood just to keep you updated on what's going on in our world. Oh, hello big boy. Lots and lots of young bulls around. Apparently Taylor tells me Daryl's back as well. No, no, you nonsense. Now don't even start with me. Go on. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, little boy. Very intimidating. Very intimidating. Off you go. The ladies are there. Yes, a Taylor tells me Daryl is back. I don't know if Daryl's his official name. Daryl with the bell out of his ear. I have seen lots of elephant bulls, but Daryl has a penchant for coming up and attempting to touch the vehicle. He likes to come and try and intimidate people, which is a habit that we've been trying to break when it comes to him approaching us. He's not, there's no harm in him. He's just cheeky. There's the biggest bull that is accompanying this herd. And we've got, I think there's about four of them, all young-ish males. This is the, well, this was the oldest. And they are doing what bulls do, which is either move about on their own or in groups. And then what they're doing at the moment is following along behind the breeding herd in the hope that a female is coming into estrus or into heat, which means she will be ready to mate. And none of them actually, I would say, in this particular group have a chance. Because if a female does come into estrus, one of the bigger bulls from the area will come in and fight them off. And I'm very sorry, I, I didn't quite catch your name there. But it is a very good observation. No, sorry, sorry, Meg, still not. Pradeep? How on, did you get that? No, Pradeep. Pradeep. Pradeep, you want to know, you've, you've observed that elephants in South Africa tend to have bigger tusks and bigger body size. And you want to know whether or not that is actually the case. To a certain extent, that is an artificial situation. So the biggest elephants would not naturally occur here. The biggest tuskers might not naturally occur here. But we do have some of the remaining big tuskers just because South Africa has been fortunate in that the elephant poaching crisis has not hit us as hard as it has countries further to the north. So where, where there are places where elephants are being poached for their tusks, and it does happen, don't be full of nonsense, mister, um, they are actually slowly but surely basically artificially selecting for either smaller tusked elephants or elephants without tusks at all. Now in a natural wild population uninfluenced by humankind, about 4% of elephants are born without tusks 
as just a natural thing, like some human beings are born without wisdom teeth in mud and water, so I don't think that they are going to be all that desperate to go and drink just yet. <laughs> 